By now, you know that Logan is a creative and critical success. Because of the movie's relentless pace, it's easy to miss out on the significance of anyone who isn't Wolverine, Professor X, or Laura. Despite the brief appearances of supporting characters, they all come with a complex comics history. Here's a guide to the characters from Logan with more meaning than you realized. And of course, if you haven't seen Logan yet, avert your eyes. Donald Pierce in Logan, Donald Pierce is the primary antagonist. While there are villains who are more powerful and diabolical, it's the robot-handed Pierce and his band of Reavers who relentlessly hunt X-23 and Logan wherever they go. In Marvel's comic universe, there's much more to Pierce. When we first meet him in Uncanny X-Men number 132, he's an exceptionally fancy cyborg member of the Hellfire Club, who are nothing but bad news for the X-Men. He was eventually kicked out of the Hellfire Club, since he basically joined to kill the club's mutant leaders. And in Uncanny X-Men number 200. 51, he reappears with the Reavers. After souping all of them up with cybernetic enhancements and literally crucifying Wolverine on a giant X. Because Pierce is nothing if not subtle. In his comics incarnation, everything about Pierce is cybernetic except his head, and he can even survive even if everything else has been destroyed. All in all, this is much more impressive than his comparatively simple robo hand in the movie. The Reavers those nameless soldiers with robot parts that follow Donald Pierce, who Wolverine and X-23 repeatedly cut into ribbons, are the Reavers. As far as Logan goes, those guys were pretty weak stuff, because, like, seriously, they were beaten up by a little girl, and that guy literally has a gun for an arm. In the comics, however, the Reavers each have distinctive abilities and reasons to hate Wolverine. They also have totally badass late 80s names, like Skullbuster, Bonebreaker, Lady Deathstrike, and... Pretty boy. Pierce combines these cyborgs with a few Hellfire mercenaries who'd been torn apart by Wolverine and repaired with robot parts, and the Reavers are born. Before meeting Pierce, some of them use the teleporting mutant gateway to commit robberies all over the world. They've also tangled with everyone's favorite heroic murderer in Punisher number 33. But like their destructible, detachable body parts, the Reavers always come back new and improved. They're basically an 80s cyberpunk vision brought to life, which probably explains why their look was toned down for Logan. We had more than enough of that in Mad Max. Caliban this guy continues to pop up in unexpected places. We last saw him in X-Men Apocalypse, where he charges Mystique money to find mutants and help ferry them to safety. A very different version pops up again in Logan, as someone who once used his mutant's tracking abilities to help Pierce and others hunt mutants, but now serves as an assistant to Charles Xavier and Logan. While he's given a moving arc in Logan, Caliban's comic incarnation has a richer backstory. When we first see Caliban in Uncanny X-Men number 148, He's in the middle of a creepy misadventure, where he uses his super strength to punch a spider woman through a window and abduct a teenage Kitty Pride, mostly because he just wants a pal. Later, things get more intense in Uncanny X-Men number 179, when Caliban is tired of being friend-zoned and abducts Kitty and slaps her in some kind of sewer wedding dress so he can marry her, which is not as romantic as it sounds. He eventually lets her go when he realizes that's a really poor dating strategy. Later, he ends up living with X-Factor. By issue number 24 of their ongoing series, Caliban, frustrated that his tracking power doesn't give him real power, asks Apocalypse for a boost. He ends up becoming Apocalypse's Horseman of Death, with increased strength and intelligence thanks to genetic alterations by Apocalypse himself. He eventually divorces Apocalypse and joins X-Force, but only until Apocalypse brings him back into the fold as the Horseman of Pestilence. Eventually, Caliban returns back to his barely articulate self before getting killed in New X-Men number 45, and then, because it's comics, he gets resurrected and killed again. It's a pretty complex arc of power and redemption that Logan only kind of touches on. Richter Perhaps one of the most surprising faces we see in Logan is Richter, the de facto leader of a group of fellow young mutants who have also escaped experimentation. Just like his comic counterpart, he has seismic powers and shows natural leadership abilities, but that's all we get to see during his brief time on screen. Richter first appeared in X Factor number 17, where he's tracked down by none other than Caliban. After being rescued from a group abusing his powers, he's welcomed into X-Factor. He later joins the New Mutants by issue number 77, but leaves to join Weapon Prime in X-Force number 11. 
a group whose sole purpose is hunting down Cable, who Richter believes killed his father. A few issues later, he realizes the error of his ways and joins X-Force, which is led by Cable. The dude is pretty indecisive. As a member of just about every X-Men team ever, Richter didn't even give up fighting evil when he lost his powers during the House of M event. He joined X-Factor Investigations under the leadership of Jamie Madrox, the Multiple Man, who, if you think about it, is probably the worst person to have as your boss. X-24 One of the more interesting film throwbacks in Logan is the appearance of X-24, an imperfect clone of Logan that mostly exists so he can watch Wolverine in a mirror match against himself. While X-24 doesn't really exist in the comics, there are a few Marvel characters that he may be a riff on. Spiritually, X-24 seems pretty similar to Albert, a robotic duplicate of Wolverine that was built by Donald Pierce and Wolverine number 37 in order to kill his mutant nemesis. Albert eventually gets over his programming and becomes an ally of Wolverine. However, the movie makes it clear that X-24 is a clone rather than a robotic duplicate, which seems to reference more recent comics centering around X-23's early adventures as the all-new Wolverine. At the start of her solo series, she encounters a few clone versions of herself who are seeking vengeance on their creators. They all have different personalities, which seems to be a major step above the mindless killing machine briefly portrayed in Logan. Dr. Rice and Gabriella Logan doesn't show as much of Dr. Rice, the man behind the program that's cloning and training young mutants. Pierce even credits the guy for causing the extinction of mutants, which is a pretty big deal. His quick death means that we don't get to see the full depth of his relationship with the young mutants, but just like the film, the Dr. Rice of the comics is significant to X-23, even if he's only in a few issues. In Marvel Comics, we first glimpse Dr. Xander Rice as a younger scientist in X-23 number one, carrying on his father's legacy with the the Weapon X program. Bad science goes down when Dr. Sarah Kinney is brought into the project, and the only way to save her work is to have an embryonic X-23 clone popped into her womb, which she brings to term, which is a whole lot more intense than Nurse Gabriella's role in Logan. That's when Dr. Rice takes over, torturing the young Laura to bring out her mutant abilities, including extracting her claws by poisoning her with radiation and building in a trigger scent that drives her into a berserker rage whenever she smells it. Rice uses a brainwashed Laura as a mercenary to slaughter dozens of people, including just about everyone in a fellow scientist family. Laura ends up killing Dr. Rice and destroying the Weapon X facility, but Rice gets his final revenge. He manages to slip the trigger scent in Dr. Kinney's hair, so Laura ends up murdering the only person who ever loved her. As she lays dying, we see an envelope full of information about where X-23 should go, to visit Logan and Professor X. Sound familiar? Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.